experiment, we are going to measure the melting point for unknown. For the unknown, I don't know what should be the setting on the meltdown apparatus. Um, so for that reason, I'm going to do, I'm going to prepare two samples. With the two samples, I would do the first sample like a quick melt. Uh, the quick melt is going to give me approximate melting point for this sample. And as soon as I have approximate melt, melting point for the sample, then I can adjust the power regulator and more proper uh, setting for my actual sample. So I'm going to place the sample into the uh, sample holder, turn it on and set it at like six this time for faster heating. Uh, that's what the quick sample is going to do for me. And I will check for the sample being uh, melted. I don't have to get the initial and final. I probably cannot with this fast heating, but I just want to get approximate number for the melting point for my um, second sample of the unknown, unknown one. Okay, we have an idea that the sample is going to melt somewhere around 140 or higher because I was heating fast. So the temp... thermometer didn't have time to show me the real temperature. Uh, probably the temperature was higher than the 140. So, but it's approximately there, 140, 150. I'm going to place the sample and set the, the heating a power regulator again between uh, four to five. The temperature shows at 145 and the sample is not melted yet. And that is the problem with like fast heating. Uh, remember for the first sample for the quick melting, this sample was melted already at 140, around 140. And uh, we cannot heat up the sample too fast. It has to go. Uh, slowly because it takes time for thermometer to show the actual um, temperature. Now we are still in the process of melting our unknown number one, but this is the real um, sample. It's 150 and has not melted yet. Okay, starting to melt. And Finish melting. We have our unknown number um, two now. And again, because it's unknown, we don't know the approximate melting point. I'm going to do a quick sample to get the approximate melting point uh, for for this sample first. Then I would do a second sample to get the real melting point of the unknown. Step three for this one is going to be mixed melting points. So As soon as I find the, the melting point for this sample, I'm going to look at the table and find three compounds that they have very close melting point to my unknown number two. And uh, with the mix, like I will make like a 50-50 mixture of my compounds the unknown with each of those three, uh, three samples, and then take a melting point. If the unknown is one of those samples, it's going to melt at the same temperature. If the compound is not that sample, it will, um, it will depress, it would be lower. Can you read, please read the, the, the lab manual? And from the lab manual, we can identify the compounds or 
figure out how the mixed melting works and you see in action for collecting your data. Now that I know the melting point for my unknown using the second sample of the unknown, um, by comparing to the table that is in the lab manual, um, I find out the uh, melting point of aspirin or acidic salicylic, um, acetyl salicylic acid um, is close um, to that range to the sample that I have uh, for is of 137. And then we have uh, benzoin. So I have sorry, aspirin 135, sorry. Aspirin uh, melting point is 135. I have benzoin melting point of 137. And I have urea melting point of 134. I'm mixing a 50-50% mixture. So I have 50% by weight of the unknown, 50% uh, of, the, of the aspirin. I mix it well to make sure that I have like an even sample. So what gets into the capillary tube is going to be an even sample of this. And both of them are, are grinded and mixed well for this, for the um, aspirin. I have the sample, unknown sample two, uh, mixed with benzoin. I'm going to mix it well to make sure that it's homogenous, fine, or even mixing, completely mixed. Then I have my sample, unknown sample, with urea. So I have the three samples um, prepared. So what is the deal now? As I said, I'm going to make the measure the melting point for each of these mixed samples, sample mixed with aspirin, mixed with benzoin, mixed with urea. Measure the melting point for all three of them and if the melting point of the mixture stays with the sample that I had for unknown two, my unknown two, let's say it was uh, melted at 136. Now, if this mixture melts at 136, which is the mixture of the unknown with aspirin, that means my unknown is aspirin. I'm just saying if. If the sample stays at 136, even though it's mixed with benzoin, then the sample is going to be, the unknown is going to be benzoin. What happens if it's not like urea? If the unknown is not urea, what happens to this mixture? This mixture is going to start melting at much lower number, let's say 120, 115. So I have to test and find out which one is the, um, is the unknown. The first sample that I'm trying is the mixture of the unknown two with urea. I will make the sample same way as other melting um, process that we did follow. I will place that in a um, in the sample holder and turn on the machine. Uh, you have seen how it looks like already when it starts melting and when it is completely melted. From now on, my focus would be for you to have a clear image of the thermometer showing the melting point. Of course, I would label the image as this is the initial melting or the, the final melting of the sample, not going to show the video because I want to focus on giving you clear picture and I will ask you to read that uh, temperature. I'm not going to read the temperature to you because 
that's part of the experiment. I, it's expectation for you to, uh, to, um, to do, to get the data, to collect the data uh, yourself. So I will um, test each one of them, um, them separately, and I give you a still shot or clear image of the sample starting to melt and final melting temperature for you to read. So our first unknown mixture was the unknown plus the urea. Now I'm going to take a second sample and that is the mixture of the unknown with aspirin and we will check the melting point. If the melting point is lower a lot from 136 that we had for unknown, that means the compound is not Aspirin, if the temperature stays around 136, then the um, unknown is going to be aspirin. So my sample is ready for the mixed melting of unknown with aspirin. I place in the melt them and I'm going to do heating. Don't know exactly at what temperature is going to heat, but um, I cannot heat up faster than uh, the 4.5 because that was for unknown that melted at 136. So we could have an idea, but since these three are too close to the melting point of the unknown, we cannot be certain. That's why we are doing mixed melting to discriminate. Is it going to be 130 uh, urea or is it going to be 130 um, Benzoin or is going to be in 130s, not exact 130s so, uh, of, the, of the aspirin. And you wait for the sample to melt. I will give you a, an image for you to, um, to read the number for the melting point. Okay, our last sample is the uh, mixture of unknown number two with benzoin. I'm preparing the, preparing the sample here uh, for the uh, unknown number two plus the benzoin. And I place it, after I pack it, I will place it in the melt temp and wait for the temperature. I will give you, as I said, a temperature for you to read. 